Swami Sarvapriyanand ji will speak to us on spiritualization sorry spiritual uh, spiritualizing life and work a brief introduction of swami ji he is a monk of the ramakrishna order he joined at ramakrishna mission vidyapeet dhyogar in 1994 since then he has served the ramakrishna mission in various capacities including being the vice principal of the dhyogar vidyapeet the principal of shikshana mandira teachers training college at belur mat and as the first registrar of the vivekananda university at belur mat howrah at present he is the acharya of the probationers training center at belur mat howrah his areas of interest are spirituality philosophy management science psychology and education i extend a warm welcome to you so now the floor is open for the interactive session by swami sarvapriyanand ji over to you om sthapakay ch dharmasya sarva dharma swarupine अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम रिवियट स्वामी जीतकामानंद जी महाराज अदर रिवियट मंग्स ब्रह्मचारीज रेस्पेक्टेड टीचर्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट कॉलेजेस एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड अदर गेस्ट्स इट्स अ प्लेजर एंड अ प्रिविलेज टू बी हियर विद यू ऑल इन मैंगलोर ऑन दिस ब्यूटीफुल बामी मॉर्निंग and the subject which i have been given spiritualizing life and work is uh, is a subject that is very close to my heart basically what i'll be doing is exploring the core teachings of swami vivekananda what are those teachings how can we understand them and most importantly how can we apply them in our life at home in the community in our colleges and schools in the classroom how can we manifest the teachings of swami vivekananda that will be my subject and since this is an interactive session so we should have some times uh, some time left over at the end for question answers so i'll manage the time in such a way that i'll speak for some time and then i'll leave it open for questions which you may write or you may directly ask them also i think they have got uh, they have got uh, my uh, portable microphones which they will hand to you so first let me put before you what i have thought if you ask what are the core teachings of swami vivekananda swami vivekananda's teachings if you want to reduce them to the essence what are the teachings of swami vivekananda there are only two two fundamental teachings first the divinity of the human being the divinity within if you go anywhere uh, you see just outside if you go you see the uh, statue of swami vivekananda you will see written below it is each soul is potentially divine so this is the teaching of swami vivekananda that our identity is that we are divine that there is divinity within us so this is the first most important teaching of swami vivekananda the divinity within each living being each human being each living being first and the second teaching is the unity of all existence the oneness of all existence that we are all one so the unity of all existence and the divinity within if you look at swami vivekananda's definition of religion many of you may have read that he says that each soul is potentially divine and the goal is to manifest this divinity within so he is talking about a divinity within which has to be manifested Swami Vivekananda once said what is his mission in life he says my mission in life can be put in a few words it is to tell humanity tell everyone of the divinity within and how to make it manifest in every movement of life so the divinity of life our divinity within that is the one point and the second point is the oneness of existence now all this sounds nice when you listen to it it sounds nice but if you if if somebody presses you or somebody presses me what do you mean by divinity within 
that's not normally how we think of ourselves if somebody says are you divine i say i'm i may be anything but not divine uh, i i think i am a human being a limited human being made of flesh and blood i have my uh, good points and my bad points whatever at the most i may be a good human being but divine i i don't even understand what it means divine and the second point oneness of all existence how are we all one it sounds nice we are all one but how bodies are different minds our our, our biographies are different our histories are different our minds are different our knowledge our feelings what we want what we like and what we dislike all this is different how are we one so how are we divine number 1 and how are we all one number 2 these are the two things which we will explore today and the goal is by the end of this talk we should all have an a grasp a clear understanding of what it means and we should know how to experience it and how to manifest it in our lives so that is our goal i remember this is not relevant but i can't resist telling you a little funny story i was in ramkrishna mission vidyapeet deoghar which is a, a residential school for boys for little boys and they stay in a hostel and the swami ji's are wardens are hostel wardens they look after these students and there is a rule every week you have to write a letter to your mummy or papa and one boy and it it's a big big job for a little boy you know so one boy in in class 9 he he said to his warden another swami ji maharaj he says says in hindi kya likhna hai har saptah kya likhna hai nothing to write about what can i write to my mummy and papa so no it is the rule you have to write now what do i write so all right i will dictate you write uh, dear mummy and papa i am fine you write okay i am fine i read in class 9 i read in class 9 a little poem is making it right me i am fine i read in class 9 my warden is divine <laughs> so what is this divinity that is what we are going to explore to understand this how we are divine what is the meaning of divinity within and how are we divine i shall refer to one of the greatest sages and scholars of india from karnataka itself vidyaranya muni who lived here some 600 years ago one of the glorious figures from the history of karnataka and of course india he is well known as the author of the great vedantic text panchadashi but there is a smaller text a very small text called drig drishya viveka a very small book a few shlokas only the author of that book some people attribute it to shankaracharya but most modern scholars are of the opinion that this book was written by vidyaranya muni so in a ramakrishna math publication drig drishya viveka if you look at it translation very good translation is available in english in the publication if you look at that book is written drig drishya viveka and the author will be blank because uh, it is little controversial who wrote it but most scholars are of the opinion that vidyaranya muni from karnataka itself some 6 600 more than 600 years ago he wrote that book today to answer our first question how am i divine that's the first question to answer that first question i shall refer only to one shloka the first shloka of drig drishya viveka you need not worry i'm not going into the intricacies of sanskrit we'll deal with it in lucid english the first verse itself is a stunning verse i will explain it but one condition is there you have to follow me very carefully it will go in four stages so you have to follow me each step of the way if you miss one step you will be lost you will not be able to catch the next one it's a very vital question and i can guarantee you you know with iso 9000 mark that you will be most happy and satisfied by the time you have understood this first verse but you must follow me carefully you've already had tea so tea or coffee whatever there is no excuse for sleeping uh, you must follow me carefully i will tell you i will repeat a few times also let us go into it the idea is very simple 
Drik means drashta, the one who sees. One who sees. And drishya means what is seen. What is seen. Very, very simple idea. I am the drashta, I am the one who sees. And this mic and this audience, this beautiful hall is all drishya. What is seen. I am the seer and all this is seen. You are the seer. Each one of you. Drashta. And all this whatever you are experiencing is all drishya for you. Drik drishya viveka. The third word is viveka. The original Sanskrit term, this viveka, it comes from vivich prithakkarane, to separate. Viveka, vivekananda, to separate the real from the unreal, to separate the true from the false, to separate the permanent from the impermanent. Viveka means to separate. So drik drishya viveka, now you can tell me, means to separate, to clearly understand what is drik or drashta and drishya, what is drishya. To separate the drashta and drishya. Drashta is you. Or I. So actually this is a method of understanding who am I. This is the method of understanding who am I truly. You will say, Swamiji, I know who I am. Such a big biodata, I have got so many papers, I have published so many degrees, I have got. This is my biodata, this is who I am. That is what Vedanta is telling you. You, are, you do not know who you are. It seems beyond question that you know who you are. We know who we are. Vedanta is questioning this fact which we regard as beyond question. He is saying that you do not know who you are. And I will demonstrate just now that what you thought about yourself is not correct. And the truth about yourself is much more amazing than you could have ever imagined. Drik Drishya Viveka. First step. It says Rupam Drishyam Lochanam Drik. Very simple. Rupam Drishyam Lochanam Drik. You may write it down. If you don't um, need to write it down also, today in the internet everything is available. So if you say Drik Drishya Viveka, you will get it there itself. And the book is available. Rupam Drishyam Lochanam Drik. What does it mean? This entire world of color and form. You are seeing such a colorful assembly here. This is Rupam. It is Drishya. And what is seeing all this? Simple answer. No philosophy, no Vedanta, nothing. Childlike answer. My eyes are seeing. Eyes are seeing. Eyes are the drashta. All this is drishya. Now, pay attention. Three things you have to remember here. First of all, drashta and drishya are different. Number one, drashta and drishya are different. Which is very obvious. This mic is different from my eyes. It's separate from my eyes. Different means separate. Separate from my eyes. My hand is separate from the eyes because I can see it. In fact, to see anything, that thing must be separate from your eyes. Imagine, if I brought this mic very close to my eyes. If I brought it here, I won't be able to see it. You bring your hand here, you can't see it. The only thing that the eyes cannot see are... Can you tell me? themselves correct you can, the eyes cannot see the eyes themselves eyes can see something that is different from the eyes so drashta and drishya are different number one this is an operating principle which we will use which we will use now step by step so first thing you have to remember drashta and drishya are different the second thing is eyes remaining the same you see so many drishyams are there different colors different people chair table light fan you know, millions of things are there for the same eyes to see. Drashta is one. Drishyam are many. This is the second thing to understand. Drashta is one. Drashta is one. That by that I don't mean I am one-eyed. He is a two in number, but the organ of vision is one. The power of seeing is one. So Drashta is one. The Drishyam are many. Second point. Third point. Drashta remaining the same. The drishyam keeps on changing. Just a little while ago we were having tea. There's a different room, different circumstances. Now you have come back into the hall. Different room, different hall. Circumstances are different. Drishya is changing. From your childhood onwards till now. Drishya has been continuously changing. All this was seen by the same eyes. Drashta is same. Drishyam is changing. Three things. Drashta and drishyam are different. Right. 
and drashta is one drishyamar many and third drashta is unchanging drishyam is continuously changing first step is eyes are the drashta and drishyam is this world rupam and for that you can apply these three things and you can see drashta is separate drishyam rupam is separate eyes and rupam are separate eyes remaining the same rupam are many millions varied and eyes remaining relatively unchanged or unchanging the rupam is continuously changing and that is true not only of the eyes true of the ears also ears and sound our skin and touch in fact all the sense organs they sense and there are sense objects rupa rasa gandha sparsha and so on first stage what is so great about it common sense no philosophy no vedanta nothing let us go on one step further you see vidyaranya muni was a classic teacher the golden rule of teaching which you all know is to go from the known to the unknown from what is near to what is far you want to take the student into something very intricate and deep so you should take the student from what is known to the student step by step to the unknown so you see how we are going into the unknown now what is you said now rupam drishyam lochanam drik very much known to us a child also understands this next step so this first step second step my eyes are open do i know it or not yes i can feel it or eyes are closed or eyes are itching or i can see very clearly or i cannot see clearly i need spectacles all these things about my eyes i know them do i not know them the condition of my eyes so the eyes become the drishyam why because i know the eyes eyes i can see well i cannot see well eyes are healthy or unhealthy eyes are open or closed what is this fellow talking about it's so boring i cannot keep my eyes open i know it nobody else may know it but you know it which means all the conditions of the eyes whatever the eyes are going through it is known to us that is what vidyanya swami says next tad drishyam driktu manasam the eyes become drishya mind becomes the drashta what is happening to my eyes why only the eyes ears nose entire body what is happening to my body i can understand from within through my mind the mind understands what is happening to the body so the mind becomes drashta the eyes and the rest of the body becomes drishya and drashta and drishya are same or different i can't hear you different yes eyes and the mind they are different drashta and drishya are different and the different conditions of the eyes or the ears or the nose or the skin entire body variety of conditions good and bad healthy unhealthy so many things are happening in the body all the time and the mind knows it the same mind the same drashta knows the variety of drishyam in this body and third point the mind remaining relatively unchanged you will say swami ji mind keeps on changing truly but relatively unchanged it show it understands the variety of conditions happening in the body the the uh, The, uh, the conditions in the eyes are changing conditions in the ear are changing uh, i could see clearly earlier now i need spectacles all this changes drishyam is changing drashta relatively unchanged what is the drishyam mind is separate from the body this also we understand mind is different from the body mind is different from the body we also understand nothing very great here also drashta and drishyam are different So what about the external world still it is drishyam what about the body now it is also drishyam who is the drashta mind is the drashta now something interesting will happen third stage third stage comes in sanskrit it is drishya dhivrittaya sakshi drishya dhivrittaya sakshi what does it mean what is happening in my mind i know it what is happening in your mind you know it anybody else can others cannot know but you feel it we feel what is happening in our minds though nobody else knows i am sad do i know it or not of course if i don't know it then i am not sad i am happy 
I know it. I understand what this Swami is saying. I know it. I don't understand what he is saying. That also I know. So whatever is happening in my mind, I know it. If what is happening in my mind, I know it, whoever that I is. Let us call it, we today in a modern age, we will call it X. Vidyaranya Swami said, because it is a witness of the mind, because it is a Sakshi of the mind, let us call it Sakshi. What is Sakshi? The Drashta who is watching the mind. When? Now? Just now? There is something which knows what is happening in your mind, something which knows what is happening in my mind, just now. Knows means illumines. Just like the stage is illumined by light. In fact, in Panchadeshi Vidyaranya Swami has one whole chapter on this example, uh, this Natya Deepa, there is a stage and it is illumined by light. So the stage is the world and our body and our mind also, this is the stage. And that light is like the, the Sakshi. Right now, you know what is happening in the mind, therefore you are the Drashta, mind becomes Drishyam. If you are the Drashta and the mind is your Drishyam, then you are separate from your you are separate from your terrible thing. You are apart from your mind. You are not the mind. You are apart from your mind. I was reading yesterday, there was an exhibition on yoga in Los Angeles and they have given a review. I read it on the net. This lady has written a review. Yoga has come from India and USA, we use it for physical health. It's very good. But we must remember, the first person who introduced yoga to USA was Swami Vivekananda more than 100 years ago and he told us Americans, he told us Americans, she writes, she, he told us Americans, you are not your body, you are not your mind. And then she writes, I don't know which one would have disturbed Americans more. You are not the body also, you are not the mind also. How are you not the mind? You are the witness of your mind. If you know your mind, you have to admit that I know my mind. I can feel it. In that case, you must be different from your mind. You are the Sakshi of your mind. You are the Drashta of your mind. Not the mind. There is an interesting story about this in the Himalayas. In uh, Uttarakhand, in Gangotri, I heard this story. That uh, one... Actually, I read about this story in one place, in Uttarakhand. One gentleman, he went to the Himalayas. He was sad, miserable. He was a businessman, Sedji, very miserable. And he went to a Mahatma, a monk living high in the Himalayas. And the idea there is, the higher you live, more wise you will be. Yeah, so, <laughs> which is not true, let me tell you. I, I, I met one Swami who was living in, above Gomuk, Gomuk and further, Tapovan. He was living there. And I asked him, you tell me truly, I am also a monk, you are a monk, tell me truly, is it worthwhile living there? He said, Swamiji, kuch bhi nahi hai udar. He said in Hindi, it is very difficult to survive. Don't go there, it's, it's a useless place. <laughs> Anyhow, this man went to the monk and he asked that monk, he said, in Hindi, I, I read the thing in Hindi, he said, I am very miserable, I am very sad. And that monk said, now you can understand why he said it, you know the philosophy already behind it. That monk said to him, Aap apne dukh ko jante hai. Do, you under, do you know, you feel your misery? Do you feel your misery? He said, yes, of course I feel my misery, that's why I have come to you. I feel it, I am miserable, I have come to you. Immediately that monk said, Agar aap apne dukh ko jante hai, to aap dukh ke drashta hai, aap dukhi nahi hai. If you know the misery in your mind, then you are the knower, the drashta of the misery in your mind. You cannot be miserable. You are the knower of dukkha, you cannot be dukhi. You must be separate from it, otherwise how will you know it? Just as you know, you are wearing this kind of a cloth, just as you know, there is a scratch on your hand. Similarly, you know Dukkha is there in your mind. You are the knower of the Dukkha in your mind. That story does not end here, it's very interesting. That man went back and thought, if you think like this, what will happen is, the mind will calm down. Actually, the mind will calm down. And when the mind calms down, you will feel good. And that, swam, that Sedji also felt good. He went back to the monk and he said, Mahatma Ji, Aapne thik kaha. Mahatma Ji, you are right. Main ab bahut shant hu. I am very peaceful now. I am peaceful now. Immediately the Mahatma scolded him. He said, 
आप शांत नहीं है आप अपने मन के शांति की दृष्टा है यू आर नॉट पीसफुल यू आर द दृष्टा ऑफ द पीस इन योर माइंड लुक एट द विजडम ऑफ दिस स्टेप द मोमेंट यू बिकम आइडेंटिफाइड विद द पीस इन योर माइंड माइंड वॉज वेरी डिस्टर्ब आई डू योगा प्रेयर मेडिटेशन और दृग दृश्य विवेक वट एवर एंड माइंड बिकम्स काम ओ नाउ आई एम काम बिग मिस्टेक बिग मिस्टेक I remember one Swami was talking about this. So beautifully, I cannot explain so well. So beautifully has explained, and everyone in the audience are sitting. Oh, wonderful! I am separate from body and mind. Ah, huh? and then that Swami said, "Lag raha hai na ki aap drastha hai man aur man se alag hai shari se." You are, you feel it, don't you feel it? That you are apart from the body and mind. Do you feel that peace? If you had said, "Ha, yes," saavdhan, bahut bade gadde mein padoge. Be careful, you are going to fall into a very big hole. why because this peace you are feeling is also in the mind the moment you get identified with that oh i am peaceful what will happen that said ji will come back to his house and his business again trouble will be there again problems will be there again the mind will be, get disturbed and then he will think i was so peaceful in the himalayas and here i have come back and i have lost my peace no you are the witness the drashta the sakshi of the peace in your mind you are the witness of the drashta or sakshi of the lack of peace in your mind also that is real peace that sakshi is real peace not the peace of the mind in mandukya upanishad one of the names of atma a sakshi is shantam shantam shivam chaturtham manyante and those who know advaita mandukya upanishad shantam atma is the sakshi is shantam it is peace itself it's not peaceful it is peace itself so third step we get you are the sakshi of your mind and what about the body sakshi of the body also through the mind the body what about the world you are the sakshi of the world also world is your drishyam body is your drishyam body continuously changing childhood youth middle age old age sick healthy all drishyam apart from you mind is your drishyam it is as much a drishyam as this mic it's separate from me you never say i am the mic swami ji don't shout you are hurting me i am the mic you don't say that mic is separate from me similarly the body is separate from you the you are separate from the mind also mind is sometimes happy sometimes not happy sometimes working well sometimes not work sometimes sharp sometimes dull changing sometimes asleep sometimes dreaming changing you are the sakshi of all of that very good you are not touched by the problems of the world you are that sakshi is not touched by the problems of the body that sakshi is not touched by the sufferings of the mind not a question of doctrine not a question of believing in it you have to understand you will see it is very clear it's very clear of course after becoming clear also to stay as that sakshi is not easy at all swami vivekananda one of the pranam mantras of swami vivekananda written by shashi maharaj swami ramakrishna anandji ji a beautiful mantra now you can understand i won't have to explain also it says it's a pranam to swami vivekananda अनित्य दृश्यशु विविच्य नित्यम तस्धत्त इहास्मील विवेक वैराग्य विशुद्ध चित्त योसौ विवेकी तमहम नमा आई सल्यूट दैट विवेकी रिमेम्बर विवेक मीन सेपरेशन अंडरस्टैंडिंग सेपरेटली आई सल्यूट दैट विवेकी वॉट डिड यू सेपरेट अनित्य दृश्यशु विविच्य नित्यम ही हेज सेपरेटेड दि पर्मनेंट फ्रॉम दि इमर्मनेंट दृश्य anitya drishya so he has separated the sakshi who is the drashta from the impermanent drishya said so, maharaj we have also done that so i am also vivekananda now but wait the second line is dangerous second line of that pranam mantra says tasmin samadhatta ihasmalilaya he became established in that immersed in that how lilaya like child's play he could truly say i am not the body i am not the mind for us the problem is 
in Drik Drishya Viveka class, when we are sitting here and thinking, I understand. Moment a mosquito bites, again I am the body. We cannot remain. What I understand, very difficult to practice. Now you say, fine, I have understood. Sakshi is separate from body and mind. Sakshi is one. Body, mind, entire universe, many. Drashta is one. Drishyam are many. And third point, Sakshi is completely unchanging. Body is changing, mind is changing, world is changing, all the Drishyam is changing. So these are the three things we have talked about. Next question immediately comes. Very good. How can I know the Sakshi? Now you have told me about the Sakshi, I am very eager to know the Sakshi. Unfortunately, here comes a shocker. The fourth stage, final stage of this verse. Vidyaranya Swami says, Drigevana tu drishyate. The Sakshi, the Drashta never becomes Drishya. You cannot know it like this. The Sakshi, you yourself, your true nature, pure consciousness, the Drashta, it cannot be known as a Drishyam. If you think about it, you will see it is quite logical. If the Drashta becomes a Drishyam, then who will be the Drashta of that? I am seeing everything with this light. Now I want to see what is this wonderful light. Let me focus the light on itself. It can't be done. Wherever you turn the light, the light is behind it. The source is behind it. So the Drashta, it cannot become a Drishyam. It cannot become an object of our knowledge. You cannot see it. You cannot hear it. You cannot touch it or smell it. You cannot even think about it. What use is it then? It is you yourself. It is your true nature. You are one with it. You can only be one with it. What is the advantage of that? The advantage of that is nothing in the drishyam, this world of, of uh, sights and sounds and smells, nothing can touch you there. That is why you can understand now Shankaracharya's famous Nirvana Shatakam, we have all heard. Yeah. Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham, you must have heard. So where, what does he say there? Mano buddhi hankara chittani naham. First he says, I am not the mind, I am not the buddhi, I am not the memory. Good memories, bad memories, all are separate from me. I am not even the I, ahamkara. I am not even the I, ahamkara. I am none of that. Then what am I? After denying all that, after separating Drashta and Drishya, he says, Chidananda Rupaha Shivoham Shivoham. That Sakshi within you, that Sakshi within me, within all of us, is that Satchidananda or Chidananda Rupa Shivoham. This is what Swami Vivekananda means when he says the divinity within all of us. Our first question. I say, Swamiji, what is the first question? I forgot. Lecture was so imp- interesting that I forgot the question itself. The question is, we are divine. Swami Vivekananda says that. What is the meaning of this divinity? How are we divine? This is what Swami Vivekananda means. That beyond the body, transcending the mind and the senses, there is an unchanging reality which you are or which I am. And that is called the Sakshi, Atma, Drashta, whatever you call it. It is consciousness. Why is it consciousness? Because it it enables us to experience. It's like a constant light. It enables us to experience. Let me try a small experiment here. You are seeing many things. Now my question is, you are seeing many things but you cannot see your own eyes. You cannot see your own eyes. You are, you are unable to see your own eyes. How do you know that you have got eyes? I am seeing so many things. How do I know that I have got eyes? Because I can't see my eyes. Whatever I see, I know there is a mic. How do you know there is a mic, Swamiji? I see it. I know there is an audience. How do you know there is an audience, Swamiji? I see it. Now, but eyes, I cannot say, I see my eyes. Then how do I know that I have got eyes? Let me make... Okay. The answer will be, because... Because you are seeing. Just now, Swamiji, you said, I am seeing the audience, I am seeing the mic. If you are seeing, your eyes must be there. Otherwise, how can you see? Right? Answer is that because I see, the very act of seeing proves that I have got eyes, though I cannot see my eyes. 
now one more question by seeing what will i know that i have got eyes by seeing what anything don't say the reflection of your eyes by seeing anything i will know that i have got eyes similarly by experiencing what see the drashta sakshi you cannot experience the drashta as drishyam but because you are experiencing all drishyams you know that you are drashta just like the eyes and not only that you need not have a special experience of the drashta to know that you have you are the drashta because just like by seeing anything i know that i have got eyes by experiencing anything you should know that you are the drashta by experiencing anything you should know that you are the drashta that is in fact in kena upanishad i will not go into that it's a difficult topic it says pratibodha viditam matam amritatvam hi vindate in every experience when you experience god in everything when you experience god that is freedom that is moksha that is amritatvam anyhow we will not go into that now two questions come before us two questions come before us all right this is what swami vivekananda means by the divinity within us the sakshi the drashta within us that is the divinity within us now two questions will come if has not come no problem you are safe but i will raise the questions the questions are this number 1 how many people are there 3 400 people question will come how many sakshis are there here is one sakshi then there so many people each one between in in him in her in him also separate sakshis 300 400 sakshi so many human beings in this world so many living beings billions and trillions of living beings so how many sakshis billion billions and trillions of sakshis or is there one sakshi that is one question one question it's a very um, a very natural question second question will be swami ji so long you have been talking about spiritualizing life not once you have mentioned god where is god drashta drishya where is god drashta drishya because you have divided the entire universe into two things you are the drashta and your mind body external universe everything is drishyam which side is god some may say is there in the hall in the in the temple or the church or the wherever he is in front of us so he is god drishyam if he is drashta the big problem will come because i am the drashta if you say god is the drashta then i am god very difficult to digest that so two questions how many sakshis are there and second question is which side is god drashta or drishya sakshi or the things which are known and both of these are answered in a remarkable verse in bhagavad gita arjuna is asking questions to um, krishna in 13th chapter and krishna answers these questions to um, arjuna's questions and there he uses a term kshetra and kshetragya same meaning drashta and drishya same meaning kshetra is drishya and kshetragya is drashta kshetra means field kshetragya the knower of the field field and knower of the field exactly the same meaning as drashta and drishya and sri krishna says idam shariram kaunteya kshetram ityavidhiyate this body is kshetra and etadyo vetti the one who knows this body from within is called kshetragya kshetragyam tang prahu tadvidah now you can easily answer if you know this body you must be separate from it so the kshetragya is separate from kshetra like drashta and drishya same thing absolutely same idea then the two questions will come how many kshetragyas are there how many sakshis or how many drashtas sri krishna answers this both questions in the next verse in the next verse one sentence he he answers half of that verse is a most remarkable sentence he says the answer is how many kshetras millions and billions or one kshetragyas millions and billions or one and where is god both he answers by saying kshetragyam chaapi mang vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharata o arjuna there is only one kshetragya one sakshi in all bodies and minds 
only one light shining through all these organisms and that light that kshetragya that sakshi you know that i am that i means sri krishna or bhagavan answer to the first question how many sakshis one where is god god is that sakshi that means at the level of sakshi at the level of sakshi beyond the body and the mind we are all sakshi consciousness we are all one we are all one and that oneness at our most fundamental level is what vedanta understands as god call it vishnu or narayan or shiva or whatever lakshmi kali anything it is our conception of god the hindu the vedantic conception of god is it is the consciousness shining through all of us beyond the limitations of body and mind swami vivekananda says i worship that god whom the ignorant call man what we ignorantly call a human being a living being swami vivekananda says that is the god i worship in ignorance you are calling it a human being or a living being in knowledge you will call it god himself that is the oneness of the universe the oneness of all existence which i was talking about with swami vivekananda the second teaching that we are all one what is that oneness god himself and that is within us it is our deepest level of existence how does it help now you think about it i will get the corollaries out how it can be help how it helps us and how we can practice in our lives if god exists why is there so much sorrow in the world ancient question every religion has to give some answer the answer given uh, some religion says that there is a shaitan who creates evil that is why suffering is there somebody says there is sin these are all correct answers at different levels there is sin papa that's why there is um, dukkha somebody says um, what can we do it is god's leela play of god and so on once sri ramakrishna himself was asked this by a devotee he had gone to the devotee's house and he asked sir if god exists why is there so much suffering in the world and sri ramakrishna gave these answers one by one and that devotee was not satisfied look at the final answer given by sri ramakrishna first of all he said why is there so much suffering sri ramakrishna said oh it is god's wish can we understand we are poor human beings we cannot understand the ways of god not satisfied no why do we suffer so much second answer it is god's leela it is the leela of bhagavan it is the play of god and the devotee he gave a very sharp sarcastic reply to sri ram krishna in bengali he said tar to leela ram ram ori it is his play but we are dying god is playing sickness suffering so much terrible things happening in society if this is the play of god we are suffering his leela and we are dying leela means divine play nobody will tolerate this you are staying in your house in next room next apartment naughty boy is playing and he hits the ball and comes to your um, to your veranda and smashes the tube light and you catch hold of the ear of that fellow hey why did you do that it is my leela will you accept never you will accept but god's leela he does not accept then the final answer given by sri ramakrishna what is the answer sri ramakrishna says eh, that person said it if god's leela but we are dying i am dying sri ramakrishna said ar tumi ke in bengali who are you do you know who you are that person kept quiet you apply this method rig drishya viveka you will end up with the pure consciousness which is watching all this body and mind and external world and it is the one with god at the deepest level you are one with god how do you manifest this swami vivekananda said you have to manifest this divinity within and that is done through love and service swami vivekananda said in one place he says he who runs away from society to meditate and die in a cave he has missed the way he who plunges headlong into the luxuries of society he too has missed the way 
So if you plunge into society, you have missed the way. If you run away from society, you have missed the way. Then what is the way? Swami Vivekananda says, the way is to divinize life, to defy the world. What you are seeing and experiencing in society, in your body and mind in society, you find God there. Then you live there in society and serve in love and in peace and in joy. It's, it's like this. Let me give an example. There is a um, wooden table, wooden chair and wooden lectern here. Lectern is there, table is there, chair is there, made of wood suppose. Now somebody comes and tells you, this chair, table and lectern are not real. Wood is real. Search for that wood. And if, if, if I say, oh this chair is not real, table is not real, lectern is not real, wood alone is real. Let me go somewhere else and search for that wood. Will I find the wood? Never. If you throw away the chair and the table and the lectern, you will never find the wood. You have to understand this chair is nothing but wood. This lectern is nothing but wood. The table is nothing but wood. In this thing itself you have to understand. Forms are different. Functions are different. Names are different. The substance, the reality is one. If you throw away all this, somewhere else wood will be there. Wooden headed. You have to know the reality. And according to Vedanta, the reality is that all this which we experience is God. Is that one Sakshi shining forth in always. It is, does not matter what religion you belong to, whether you belong to a religion or you are an atheist. It does not matter what gender you belong to. It does not matter what region or caste or age or uh, education or wealth. None of that matters. The reality is one God is playing in so many ways. And the way uh, now, the way to express this manifestation of the divinity is that I am existence, consciousness, bliss. The problems of this world cannot touch me. I have a body and mind. What do I do with it? Here, are, here is the world. So many people are suffering. Swami Vivekananda said, My God, the poor. God who is appearing as the poor. My God, the ignorant. God who is appearing as the illiterate or the un uneducated person. My God, the sick. God who is appearing as the sick person. Let me serve. That service becomes worship. That service is not social service. It becomes worship. You can do that worship in your home. So I am Vivekananda says, to become religious, do I have to give up my uh, wife or husband or children and run away to the forest? No. He says that's the uh, activity of brutes. You see God in them. In your husband or your wife or your f uh, father or mother and children. And according to the situation, according to the person, you offer service in the form of worship. That is manifestation of the divinity within. Then you will see there will be no suffering, frustration, uh, expectations which are dashed. No. My God is there. I, I offer my, in a humble way, I offer my worship. Let him or her do whatever she wants with that worship. May be grateful, may not be grateful. Does not matter. So in this way, Swami Vivekananda, is, uh, you know, the, he started the Ramakrishna mission. Hospitals, relief activities, schools, colleges, universities, all of that is worship of the living God. This is the philosophy within. And this is a practical philosophy which you can apply in your day-to-day -day life. Everywhere you see God within, see God inside, see God outside and you live your life accordingly. Swami Ranganathanandaji was the president of the Ramakrishna Matan Mission. He put it very beautiful, in a very few words, in a very simple way he put it. What is spirituality? He said, spirituality is when I close my eyes, I find peace within. When I open my eyes, my attitude is, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? That is spirituality, he says. Just see, it is the reverse of our usual problem. And Swamiji, when I close my eyes, so many problems come up. All sorts of household problems, office problem, career problem, health problem. Even worse, national, international problem, all comes up. And when I open my eyes, not what I can do for you, what can I get from you? This is the worldly attitude. The spiritual attitude is, I close my eyes, find peace within. You can call it Sakshi, you can call it God, whatever. If your attitude is of a Jnani, I am the consciousness. Chidananda Rupa Shivoham. If your attitude is of a Bhakta, I find my beloved 
Krishna or Shiva or uh, Durga or Ganapati I, we find it within whatever peace within and service to the world outside I can go on but this uh, I will sum up the two questions divinity within is the pure consciousness shining within all of us and how to find it by the method of jnana by the method of meditation by the method of nishkama karma and by the method of devotion and this sakshi itself is one among all of us that is the unity the oneness of all existence and that itself is god okay 45 minutes i think i am to be congratulated the entire sweep of vedanta in 45 minutes is not a uh, small achievement but it's an interactive session and we should have questions and answers i think we can now um, leave the floor open for questions and answers yes okay questions anything practical questions questions related to spiritual life vedanta yes please uh, tell us your name i am professor nagaraj yes from and where are you from i am from manipal yes. mit college no, professor in the electrical department so my question is uh, uh, now if somebody is very ill he is not physically sound and he has some problems then how he can uh, digest uh, these things uh? this so what thing, is the yes. method to overcome so physical problems one of the most terrible things is severe physical pain disease i will give you two examples one example is i have heard about it i have read about it but i'm giving you because it's in karnataka and this mangalore specially our senior swamis know about it swami vireshwaranand ji maharaj he was the 10th president of the ramakrishna matan mission he was from a place just outside mangalore great swami great swami we used to call him prabhu maharaj i have seen him when i was a very small boy just i have got a very faint memory but clear memory not faint only once i remember but our maharaj here and others they have seen him i read a small reminiscence about him one senior swami saying that once vireshwaran ji maharaj prabhu maharaj was very ill he was in belur math the headquarters of the ramakrishna mission he was the president of the ramakrishna mission quite old he was in his uh, late 70s i think at that time or early 80s he was quite ill he is lying down and one swami who has written this he said next day i went to meet him to ask him a few things and i saw he was sitting up in the bed and uh, doing some paper some work he was doing and he said this swami maharaj swami ji you are ill you are not keeping well you should not work now don't work now take rest and that old swami sick he says if i can sit up he says in bengali he said um sadhu uthe boshle shusto if i can sit up a monk can sit up then he is healthy you should immediately start all activities again look at the mental attitude you forget all vedanta and spirituality and all just look at the mental attitude i don't care for the sickness of the body body will be sometimes sick body will be sometimes healthy and one day it will deteriorate and die it's a truth harsh truth but it will happen i am not to be cowed down or bullied by this body if i can sit up straight i am healthy this is one story one little story another one which i have seen with my own eyes it's a remarkable thing a very senior old monk once in a hospital he was admitted i was also admitted i was the youngest patient and he was the oldest patient he was more than 80 now imagine both legs paralyzed both eyes blind old man sanyasi no relatives no bank balance nothing and is one of the happiest persons i have ever seen always joyful anybody comes he will ask how you are how are people in your ashram how are things going on he will never once i never once heard him complaining about the body how is this possible you know we see transcending the body we get some vague idea that something like a smoke or atma will come out of the body i am outside the body this is transcending the body body is in terrible condition i don't care i am not even aware that this body is like this both legs paralyzed eyes are blind laluda maharaj maharaj you have seen these are two examples the strong conviction realization if you have it 
nothing like it you will clearly feel i am not this body but the strong conviction that i am not this body and mind that is one way the other one is which is suitable if you have a bhakta temperament if we have a bhakta temperament you give everything up to god you believe in god in any religion i surrender all this my sickness my pain everything to god i will not worry about it take all the precautions necessary medicine treatment all right but don't worry about it at all this is the nature of the body any other question yes please tell us your name and where you are from i am nilima from nmmit nitte uh, first of all i just would like to congratulate uh, on your awakening speech and most of us could not sleep and uh, the question out of the curiosity is uh, maybe i did not follow or uh, maybe out of my confusion uh, you said uh, the sakshi is one among all the people so the question is uh, if the sakshi is same among everybody the sakshi can see everything else drishya he can see so why uh, my sakshi the sakshi in my my body or whatever it is why i am not able to see uh drishya of another person means mind state or exactly. his thoughts of the other person like why correct, correct. being uh, one sakshi is present in my body but i am not able to see the other person's uh, thoughts. mind the drishya mind of thoughts. thoughts yeah nilima you uh, it is a proof that you have not slept because this question is a correct question and <laughs> this question should come to anybody please sit anybody who has heard this clear carefully that person should have such a question not only that i will tell you a little sad story you know this aircraft which was shot down over ukraine this malaysia airlines was flying from netherlands to i think kuala lumpur it shot down over ukraine just one month back now one student indian student who is studying in netherlands he wrote a mail to me i had given this speech somewhere else and it was video recorded put on the internet and he has seen this speech and then he said he wrote in that mail with great difficulty i got your email id Swami ji I liked your speech but I have a question My dearest friend was on that aircraft and that person he died my closest friend Now if I am the sakshi everything in my mind I can know I am the same sakshi in that body also Can I know that person's last thoughts Can I know little more about that person because he is gone my dearest friend is gone now the answer to this is like this remember what we think as knowing i am seeing i am hearing i am knowing i have got ideas i understand i don't understand all of this is in the mind i know my own mind this one is a thought in the mind in whose mind in my mind or in your mind but not in that person's mind so all the knowing which we feel has two parts one is the sakshi which is like the light the other one is what is called technically a vritti in the mind it's like a in a lake there will be a wave so vritti is very simple i look at the mic i have a mic vritti in the mind and that is illumined by the sakshi i look at this flower there is a flower vritti in my mind and that is illumined by the sakshi which i am now i do drik drishya viveka and i am aware of the thoughts in my mind that is also even the drik drishya viveka is a vritti in the mind i am the sakshi this is also a thought it is in the mind whose mind anybody who is doing that in that mind only so when you say i know the contents of my mind i the sakshi am knowing the contents of my mind be very careful here where is this thought in the sakshi or in the mind it is in the mind only it's a thought it's in the mind which mind your mind so whatever you know knowing has two parts sakshi and the vritti in the mind so those vrittis i know my own mind as the sakshi that's a thought which will be in your mind only not in anybody else's mind similarly all the thoughts in that mind are known by the sakshi you the sakshi in that mind and that knowledge is limited to that mind only you want to know the contents of another person's mind there are methods they say in yoga telepathy or something will be there but vedanta does not say that vedanta does not disagree vedanta says it's quite possible but the point in vedanta is you are the witness of your mind and the witness of all the minds and being the witness this idea is there in your mind but not in that person's mind and all the ideas in that mind are not in your mind so what will be illumined in your mind what you say i know 
is in your mind only if you think about this you will see it is just like saying person outside is seeing a bird some person outside is seeing the bird why and you are sitting here you are not seeing that bird or you are seeing me that person is not seeing me why because in that body and mind the eyes are in connection with this object and the knowledge comes in that mind sakshi illumines that knowledge in that mind only the sakshi in that mind the same sakshi will not illumine the knowledge because that mind is not in connection with this particular object think about it it's not really very uh, difficult but thing is knowledge vritti gyana is limited to the minds anything that we see hear touch smell all these things or thoughts which we have are limited to individual minds all are illumined by one sakshi it's like if you have separate boxes here the light falls on all of these boxes and illumines all the objects and in each of the boxes there is a light shining the reflection of that that knows what is there in that particular box only right think about that one more question and then we'll run out of time yes a mic here yeah. oh there is a mic there yeah please okay. go ahead then the next year yeah. i am vanishri joseph from justice case hegde institute of management yes uh, my question is like uh, a person being spiritual or a person being religious is one and same or the religion and spirituality are different very good question we can put it this way spirituality as we understand it today would be the core of religion but religion has many aspects there are mythologies there are books there are rituals there are different forms a church a temple a mosque or a zen buddhist meditation center all of these are aspects of religion but the core inner development you can call that spirituality and all religions want that in different ways in different names in different methods they are all working towards that so there may be a conflict in the methods in the mythologies in the rituals prescribed by different religions but in the core spirituality there is no conflict in the core spirituality there is no conflict spirituality is the inner spiritual development the inner development which we are talking about here see for example vedanta and islam the words terminologies used are very different the prescriptions mythologies used are very different but you know one of the best ways of putting the truth which i just which we ta- talked about just now one of the finest formulations i have heard is from a sufi poet a sufi muslim poet who says very beautifully he, he sings that when i searched for allah i found only myself when i searched for myself i found only allah so beautifully it is said this is the vedantic truth tatvamasi that you are the sakshi but put in the same way the same truth put in a different way by the sufi poet so spirituality is that core um, spiritual development core inner development aldous huxley called it the perennial philosophy perennial philosophy something that is runs in and through all religions yes question namaste uh, we can switch off and switch on fan or light anything yes in the same way can we switch off drushya from uh, the drushta drushta can uh, switch off drushya is yes. it possible a very nice and question if yes. it is possible how can we do it yes thank you now question she has asked is very interesting you see drishya is often troubling drishya troublesome from mosquito is there troubles me my boss is there in the office troubles me uh, my head of department or principal in the i am sorry all principals but that is what the teachers think about you <laughs> it is troubling in the house husband wife children may sometimes create trouble can i switch off switch off means i will not do anything to them i will remain as drashta but drishya will not be there is it possible yes it is possible it is possible i will give you two things first of all how it is possible and second why it is not necessary first it is possible yoga says in samadhi when you remain as the purusha as this as the uh, sakshi the term used in yoga is purusha 
in deep meditation you lose complete awareness of the external world you lose complete awareness of this physical body you lose complete awareness of the mind also there is no thinking but you it's not deep sleep it's not like sushupti it's not like deep sleep or unconsciousness because you are fully conscious it's a remarkable thing one swami he wrote a poem in malayali unfortunately i cannot understand malayali but i saw the translation of the heading of that poem remarkable just the first line of the poem that shows some kind of illumination no doubt he, the heading of the poem is the midnight sun the midnight sun it is completely dark world is completely dark yet the sun is shining so there is no drishyam but full illumination is there as sakshi what is the meaning of this asampragnata samadhi patanjali this uh, yoga sutra it says when you have chitta vritti nirodha when the mind is completely calm and merged in sakshi what happens next sutra says tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam the drashta he uses that word drashta which we were just now using drig and drishya drashta and drishya he uses patanjali the founder of yoga he uses the word drashta drashta swarupe tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam swami vivekananda says just like a lake if there are no waves in that lake and the water is crystal clear you can see the bottom clearly similarly the atman the sakshi the drashta which is beyond the body and the mind that remains by itself when the mind is completely merged or calm that is the technique of samadhi very difficult very difficult but that is what yogis are trying to practice number 1 number 2 vedanta says something more interesting it says you need not do it you need not do it how when you realize the first truth is you are drashta and the world is drishyam the second truth is you are one with the entire universe atmevedam sarvam you as drashta you are everything i was just reading today in ashtavakra it is said i illumine everything body and the entire universe deham menam jagat sarvam aham prakash prakash prakashayam aham eko i by myself i am the knower of the entire universe and this body also in that case either everything is mine or nothing is mine you see the agyanis problem is our problem is we identify only with one body then all problem starts i am this one all this is separate from me i like some i dislike some others i have uh, good relation with some i have bad relations with others i am running towards certain things i am running away from other things and this is my life only because i have identified with particular living creature so the vedanta says you are one with everything in that case there is no separate drishyam from you anymore what we started with drashta and drishyam are separate now the drashta and drishyam they merge in the drashta i alone am all kshetragyam cha api mang vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharat if i am one with all then my relation with all friends enemies people who are indifferent to me all of that will be same because i am in all these forms swami vivekananda writes blamer blamed or praiser and praised when they are but one whom to blame and whom to praise when blamer blame praiser and praised are but one who whom can you praise and whom can you blame your day to day activities you will carry on but you know from within you have oneness your feeling of oneness with everybody there you will never have a reaction of frustration anger hatred towards other you will never have that or even if you have it it will go away very quickly in bengali they say sadur rag jalet dag a good monk if he gets angry it's like a wa- line drawn in water as you draw the line in water it keeps to keeps on disappearing so if he gets angry also that anger should disappear immediately so these are the two answers it is possible for the drashta to remain without the drishyam and second it's not necessary it's only because we consider the drishyam to be troublesome we want to reject the drishyam but it's good to experience the drashta apart from the drishyam be one with the drashta apart from the drishyam at least for the sake of conviction that i am beyond all this it's a very profound question the avastatraya vichara 
in Advaita Vedanta it goes into this question but there is no time for that one last question then we are run out of time from the <laughs> gentleman's side this time yes we will conclude now. Oh, 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 I see. Fine. Later. We will interact later. Swamiji, I am Divakar Bhatt, NMMIT in it. I am librarian. Uh, Swamiji, you told um, Sakshi, being a one Sakshi, he, he cannot read all the minds. But we, um, we told that it is possible to know everything whatever in uh, there in all minds is it possible sir is there any that's what the question correct yeah. that's what the question was um, to put it briefly there are they say there are yogic methods called telepathic methods to know what is there in uh, other people's minds and of course god being identified with all minds god is supposed to be omniscient so god knows everything in everybody's mind that is also the concept uh, behind antaryami we will conclude now. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am sure with this discourse, as I am left to ponder, you are also left to ponder and wonder how to realize self. I do infer that every man is a volume in himself. And what one needs to do is learn how to understand self so that he can be a better individual himself and can create the change in the lives of others as we teachers are role models to our students. On behalf of the organizers, I thank Swami Sarvapriyanandaji for his discourse. Thank you, Swamiji.